It's the lockdown show, the lockdown show, the lockdown, lockdown show. Oh, it's the lockdown show, it's the lockdown show, it's the lockdown, lockdown show. Oh, right, here we go. What am I going to talk about this morning? Well, I'm going to talk about something where I've just been on Bastard the Bike. Uh, that's what I've called it from now on. Say good morning to Bastard. <coughs> because <coughs> I've just done the hour and it's something's been a flash of the blinding obvious shall we say allow me to explain when you think about it every minute of every hour of every day is precious isn't it we just don't realise how precious it is but it's very precious because when you're lying on your deathbed, and I've been there a few times myself, you realise just how precious life is. And yet, we don't take advantage of this gift that we've been given. In the year 2000, um, I had an operation, nearly died. In fact, I was that close to death. I was lying in a ward and there was this, you know, I think there was six beds, three one side, three the other, might have been four and four, but three and three will do. And as you went into the ward, I was at the, the top left, right next to the window. I remember lying there, think, looking out of the window at a beautiful blue sky and thinking to myself, I'm never going to feel the warmth of the sun again. I'm never going to have that smell of new mown grass shooting up my nostrils I'm never going to hear a bumblebee buzzing enjoying itself looking for food and I even thought I'm never going to hug a tree I've never hugged a friggin tree but I'm never going to hug a tree they'd ripped open my guts they'd taken out my large colon they'd put a bag on my belly they'd also taken away the anal cavity and so they stitched two cheeks of my ass together so I've got what's called a Barbie bum and in end of July beginning of August this year that's 20 years since that operation but something I've never forgotten and I don't know if it's true but I'm telling you now I believe it was I was lying there considering so many different ways to kill myself even walking up to the top of the hospital and throwing myself off Allow me to explain, I couldn't walk, but my thoughts were going there. And as I lay there, and it was at night, this ball, this, this kind of pulsating black ball came through the, in, through the window and it went down the ward, went to the door and then came back and hovered at the foot of my bed. I was ill. I was really, really ill. I mean, more ill than I think I've ever been in my life. And I knew it was time. It was time to go. It was the Grim Reaper. I lay there and thought, I've got a young son. What's he going to say? My wife was already having an affair. She didn't give a rat's ass. But I had a son. And I said to this black ball, I'm not ready yet. I've got a son to bring up. I've got to teach him things. Don't take me now. And it disappeared. And I promise you, I promise you till my dying breath I instantly started to feel better I don't know what it was I haven't got a clue but I instantly started to feel better and it was then that made me realize life God it's so precious but we just abuse it and when I came out and found out about everything that was going on I left and went to live near North Allerton and I abused my body I was eating all the wrong foods, I was drinking like you've got no idea, started off with a bottle of wine, that, that went on, this is per night, that went on to a box of wine, the box of wine didn't do me any good so I then went on to the spirits and I then started getting a litre bottle of bloody whiskey and at seven o'clock on a night, if there was no alcohol in the house, I shot off down to Sainsbury's supermarket 
and I was spending that much I then went for the cheapest bloody shit I could find but as long as I could get the biggest bottle you'd go to the doctors and you'd have your blood test and you know you'd get adverse results and the doctor would turn around and say do you drink very much Mr Lee oh yeah I have a couple of glasses of wine on a weekend more like a couple of bottles of bloody whiskey anyhow I'm diverting a little bit there but over the years I've now got to the point where I've only got 53% lung function that's 47% of my lung doesn't work doesn't work recently had a CT scan because after the accident last year falling out the back of the wagon they scanned my abdominal and pelvic area and they said yeah 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 your yeah. bottom half of your lungs just pfft, they're just not working they, they're just basically bloody breeze blocks and so you think well there's no point in doing anything is there I can't climb mountains I can't do anything I also became diabetic two years before my operation and so I have to inject myself four times a day just to stay alive and I've also got severe arthritis in both shoulders um, where the surgeon says I need two new shoulder joints desperately because it's now bone on bone although I think it's worn itself smooth so I don't really suffer at all I've got lack of movement why am I telling you that I'm telling you that because bastard the bike has now come back into my life I've had it over 20 years 20 year and it's been with me wherever I've been and it's normally through that door there that door there <laughs> and occasionally I get it out and I'll cycle on it and let me tell you when this when this this lock I thought go on I'm gonna do something I'm gonna I'm gonna start to do something and it might be that I'm gonna start preaching hallelujah there's been another blinding flash of the bloody obvious when I first got on it three weeks ago I could do 15 minutes and my legs wobbled and that space between the cheeks of my ass remembering I don't have um, an ass as normal I don't have the ass crack and the anal cavity and all the rest of the stuff so the muscles over the years they, they've gone slack so sitting on that bloody seat oh my god it like splitting me difference but that's strengthened this morning I did an hour on level two and didn't get off the seat because things have started to progress and I'm starting to feel bloody marvelous and that's what I want to say to you get off your bloody arse and do something you don't have to do a lot walk the dog walk faster do 10 squats onto a dining room chair then have a minute's rest and do another 10 then do a minute's rest do another 10 and then over the period of time build it build it build it and what's going to happen is our friend Mr. and Mrs. Endorphin are going to all of a sudden think, hang on, not been around here for a while. Ooh, this feels good. And the body's going to want more and more and more and more. You're going to feel fantastic. So instead of sitting there on a night drinking the cans of bloody beer, which do you no good except empty your bank account, is that really what you want to do? Is it? Is that your life? Is that the precious period of your time you're going to spend doing that? I've done it. Don't get me wrong, but let me tell you something else. For the last 20 years, Mr. Wiggly has got worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And it didn't take him long to get bloody worse, let me tell you. And so I've not had humpy time for 20 years. And I'm, you know, bashing people, no, 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 women, go away, go away. And the reason I'm saying to them, go away, is that my body's ugly. It's got a bag hanging. Just a minute. Let me take that off. Look at that 61-year-old body, friggin' hell. It has a bag there. And a whacking great bloody scar. And the other part about it is... Oh, I was going to put my shirt back on. I won't bloody bother. Um, the other part about it is, is that what woman wants to have that rattling on their ass? <laughs> Not that I could. But something I've noticed. Oh, come on, friggin' hell. Something I've noticed. Ugh. It was a couple of days ago. I grew up at three o'clock in the morning. 
and I very nearly had to do a handstand to have a piss. Mr. Wiggly had got a bit of a semi-smile on. I thought to myself, ooh, because I'm losing weight. The blood's pumping around the body. It's finding places it hasn't been for a while. I don't think it'll ever get back to the way that it was. A romping, stomping, crisp eating machine. But isn't that interesting? But my 61 and a half year old body, I thought was knackered. But an hour on that. I feel as if I'm bloody 30 year old again. Whacking on that. Do something. Life is so precious. I promise you on your deathbed you'll wish you'd done something extra. I could have been killed last year falling out the back of the wagon. I would have missed all of this opportunity. I could have died. In fact, I'm very nearly bloody dead. Back in July, August 2000. I'd have missed all of this. I wouldn't have gone to India, Bosnia, Tenerife, Cyprus again. I wouldn't have gone there and, and had the experiences and the feelings and everything else. Now, I'm not saying I'm a convert and, you know, it's like an ex-smoker. Hallelujah! Oh, do you smoke? Well, I don't smoke. I've had that bike, as I've said, for over 20 years. And I've started to use it again and I'm looking forward to it. I got on this morning and I smiled. Oh, my bloody God. Do something. Be somebody different. Do something different. If you're walking your dog, as I've said, walk faster. Get up from the chair a dozen times. Start small. That hurt me when I first started using it again this time. Now, there's no hurt. There's an ache, but there's no hurt. And I'm getting droppy bits on here, dripping off the end of my bloody nose. What's that all about at this age? It's starting to make me feel fantastic. As I showed you my 61 and a half year old body before, I wouldn't have shown you it three weeks ago, four weeks ago, I wouldn't. Because there was more wobbly bits than a blamange. But to have to push something down to have a wee, well, isn't that an exciting experience? Until the next time, bye bye for now. Ha <laughs> ha!